protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com Thousands of people showed up today for the Donald Trump rally that was held in Sanford, Florida. People were lining up 12 hours before the start of this rally. About 7,000 people had already made it into the hangar at about 2 o'clock. Uh, thousands of people were still outside trying to get in. Absolute insanity there. I mean, people are electrified to see Donald Trump. Meanwhile, we had a VP hopeful Tim Kaine holding a rally nearby and only 30 people showed up and most of those people were the press. So total stark contrast there. Even Mike Pence is pulling in hundreds of people there um, going to see him. But it's a total, total complete opposite of what we're seeing with Donald Trump versus Hillary supporters. She has to coax people and con them into getting them to come to her rallies. Meanwhile, people are like lining up hours ahead of time to see Donald Trump. Now, Alex Jones and Owen Schroyer both have some individual takes on this rally and what Trump's speech uh, entailed there today. So that's coming up later in the show. Uh, but we just wanted to kind of point out how manufactured the consent is for Hillary Clinton to become the president. A new WikiLeaks email shows that uh, her campaign was actually plotting a fake grassroots campaign using celebs to con youth into voting for her. Uh, their concept paper strategized, saying it should feel almost like we got together and decided to do this on our own. Oh, because we just love her so much. And it's basically spelling out how they could use young elected officials and entertainers to build a, quote, grassroots movement of under 40 voters as a vehicle to migrate support for Bernie into activism for Hillary. Um, so you'll recall there when we saw Lena Dunham and Madonna and Katy Perry and all these other celebrities kind of telling the, the Bernie supporters, quit being ridiculous. Come, you know, Sarah Silverman said, you quit being ridiculous, Bernie supporters. Just come on over to Hillary. Uh, so this is where we were really starting to see. But even they put the word grassroots in quotes because they know it's a total top-down con job. This is the only way that she can fill her rallies is by conning people into supporting her. That's why she is trying to co copy Donald Trump's um, enthusiasm the supporters have for him. She is going to throw a concert with Jay-Z as the headliner. So this is going to be in Cleveland. And sh she's also tweeting out about how LeBron James is going to be there. Oh, everybody come and get to the show. So Hillary, Hillary Clinton is basically the opening act for this big concert that's going to be held in Cleveland. She can't even get people to show up without having something phenomenal that she knows people are going to want to be at. Anyway, we've seen how she's hijacked Memorial Day parties and, and Fourth of July parties and things to say, oh, look at all these people that have shown up for me. And they're all kind of going, well, I don't know. I thought this was a, a Labor Day picnic. What? I don't know what's going on here. So as we're seeing now that she has these to totally manufactured crowds, manufactured enthusiasm, is that going to backfire on her come voting day? There's an article up on our website written by Paul Joseph Watson talking about Huckabee, Governor Huckabee, of course, and something that he said on Fox News. And the Clinton camp, he points out, is trying to paint their win as a foregone conclusion in the media and uh, saying that the election is already won. Huge mistake, as Paul Joseph Watson points out. And he should know, after all, the same thing happened with Brexit. Similar situation, media reports. Uh, it's not happening, it's not happening, and of course, then it happened. So this is what Paul writes. Good luck with that, of course. He highlights the fact that Mike Huckabee um, pointed out the fact that this strategy on behalf of the Clinton campaign, helped by the media, uh, in which the media is saying that she's already won uh, because they're trying to de depress the vote, it might in fact backfire. And some Trump supporters, they've claimed the, the, the Clinton camp is deliberately stoking that narrative uh, so that the election result is a foregone conclusion in an effort to kill the enthusiasm behind Trump's campaign and make his supporters think that their vote is worthless. Uh, uh, Huckabee goes on to say, I think the Hillary people are making a fundamental mistake and I hope they keep making it and here's their mistake. The one thing they can't afford to do is take their varied, tippet support and somehow lose some of the people because people say, you know what, she's going to win, I don't need to vote. And Something that Paul points out, you know, trying to make the Trump voters stay home. Well, good luck with that. It's been our experience that they're very enthused. They're pumped. They're hyped. Uh, we're encouraging uh, anybody voting uh, for Trump to wear a red shirt to be identifiable. 
in this because we're in, we understand that we're in a peak time where election fraud and voter fraud is at the forefront. So just be mindful of that. Take a look at this article as well. Tell us what you think about this. Is Huckabee right? The media's foregone conclusion that, uh, that Hillary already has it in the bag. It could just come back to bite them in the butt. Well, I'm Margaret Hell reporting for Infowars.com. Well, surprise, surprise, the president lied. Now, you'll recall he said that he first learned about Hillary Clinton's private email when he heard about it on the news, same time as all the rest of us. Well, it turns out that was a lie. And we already knew that because we saw that he was exchanging emails with Hillary Clinton using a uh, fake pseudonym, using fake initials. Uh, but now the latest data dump released by WikiLeaks actually shows some emails from Clinton campaign uh, chairman John Podesta and others saying, whoa, he, he, he just went on the news saying that he heard about it along with the rest of us. We need to clean this up. He has emails from her. They do not say state.gov. So they knew they were in a pickle, and now they're trying to clean up what the president came out and said because he lied once again on television. And, of course, uh, his press secretary came out the next day and just was kind of like, oh, well, of course he, he, he meant this. He didn't mean that. I mean, they're all scrambling to protect each other, but... It's lies are hard to keep straight. The truth is much easier to tell, which, of course, is why we see once again people there within the State Department are pleading the fifth more than 90 times. The Fifth Amendment is the only amendment that the Clinton campaign seems to really care about. Now, this is John Bentel. He's the former director of information resource management of the executive secretariat, and he would not answer any questions about whether the Clintons had paid his legal fees or offered him financial incentives and a federal judge ordered that Bentel was ha had to testify under oath because the record in this case appears to contradict his sworn testimony before the Benghazi committee. Now, in June 2015, he told the House Select Committee that he had no knowledge of Clinton's private email server. But it turns out that Bentel actually told employees in his office that Secretary Clinton's email arrangement had been approved by the State Department's legal staff and also instructed his subordinates not to discuss her email again. So here we go, people. They don't care. They're swearing under oath. And turns out later that they are lying, just like Hillary Clinton when she was under oath saying, to Turkey? I don't know anything about shipping weapons anywhere. We'll see. Will they be brought to justice? Who knows? Now, we saw the other day that Donna Brazil was um, kind of in a, a little kerfuffle there with Megyn Kelly. Uh, and she's basically really trying to push out this agenda that her emails had been doctored. She continues to say, I've seen so many of them that have been doctored. Things come in from me at 2 a.m. that I never sent, which is total crap. It's a total lie. Point specifically to what emails are have been doctored, but they can't. They just say, oh, I've seen them. I've seen some fakes and all that. Well, now tech bloggers are actually saying it took them less than five minutes to confirm that these emails were, in fact, uh, verify that they were sent between the Clinton campaign, Donna Brazil, et cetera. So this is a domain keys identified mail, DKIM. It's a system employed by many email servers, including HillaryClinton.com. It verifies emails to recipients and avoids spam filters. So the system sends a key to the receiver to verify that the sender and confirm the email hasn't been tampered with. So these bloggers ran the, the DKIM keys and the other emails through this software and it validated the emails and said they were real and undoctored. The Daily Caller also ran a similar test and confer confirmed this as well. They got the same results. So if, if these emails had been altered in any way, this software would have declared the email unverified. But they're even going so far as saying, well, what if WikiLeaks got in and then they altered uh, the DKIM key also because they're such good hackers? What if they I mean, they're going that far. But, you know, they say, look, then that means that they would have had to access the HillaryClinton.com server in order to change that key, which we know they didn't do because, heck, even the uh, FBI and the DOJ didn't access that. We have another article up by Paul Joseph Watson. Report vote switch from Trump to Hillary Clinton in the least two cities in Texas. Residents of at least two cities in Texas are complaining that they voted for Donald Trump and it switched over. Now, I actually went out yesterday here in Austin and did early voting myself. I've been very skeptical of these voting machines. So when I actually went through each page, I would submit, then go back, 
look, take a picture if necessary, and then proceed on. It's very imperative, it's very important that you do photograph these machines if you do see anything wrong, if anything switches from the way that you are supposed to be voting. We've heard time and time again in the primaries that people had their votes being switched over in these machines. We know that George Soros owns a lot of these machines and he is gonna be very biased when he wants you to come out and vote a certain way regardless that you wanna see Trump up there as the next president. So if you're gonna early vote or go out on November 8th, make sure that you take the time to read over each page before you submit so you make sure that you have the chance to make America great again. This has been Joe Biggs with InfoWars.com. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of brain force. We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. You will find Brain Force, Survival Shield X2, and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139.